Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And today is a book review. I cannot believe it is like the 12th of January and I'm already doing my second book review of the year. And today I am reviewing Karen McManus's um, One of Us is Lying, which is so interesting because when I completed it on my Goodreads, um, it said I started it in like October of like 2017 or something. So I must have like put it on Spookathon like a year and a half ago or a year and a couple months ago. And I just like finished it now and never had taken it off of my like to read thing. So anyway, yeah, it took me like a year and a half to read this book. No, I ended up actually listening to it on Audible, um, and I listened to it in, um, like, less than five days. It was, that, it was really, it was kind of that good. Like, I, I'm, I have such mixed feelings about this book, okay? And so I want to talk about that. Um, but this is kind of how I picked it. So I have the physical copy over there, and I haven't read it, and or I hadn't read it, and um, I had put it on all these TBRs, and you know for Spookathon, and I think maybe even like Booktubeathon, and I had said I was going to read it during different things, and I never like like I got like ten pages into it or a couple chapters into it, and I never finished the book, right? So I was on um, the New York Times bestseller list the other day and I was like looking at all the books that are on there because I wanted to pick like an audible book that I could really get into. And um, so I looked it up and I saw that it had been on the New York Times bestseller list for 71 weeks. And I was like, okay, I did not realize that this book had had such an impact. I probably need to read this book. So um, I got it on Audible and I started listening to it and I finished it really quick. So if you guys don't know, about One of Us is Lying. Let me read you the synopsis for it. Here, I'll put the, the, uh, the, cover, <laughs> the cover for you right there. The Breakfast Club meets Pretty Little Liars. One of Us is Lying is the story of what happens when five strangers walk into detention and only four walk out alive. Everyone is a suspect and everyone has something to hide. Pay close attention and you might solve this. On Monday afternoon, five students at Bayview High walk into detention. Bronwyn the Brain is jail bound and never breaks a rule. Addie the Beauty is a picture-perfect homecoming princess. Nate the Criminal is already on probation for dealing. Cooper the Athlete is the all-star baseball pitcher. And Simon the Outcast is the creator of Bayview High's notorious go gossip app. Only Simon never makes it out of that classroom. Before the end of detention, Simon's dead. And according to investigators, his death wasn't an accident. On Monday, he died, but on Tuesday, he planned to post juicy reveals about all four of his high-profile classmates, which makes all four of them suspects in his murder. Or, or are they the perfect patsies for a killer who's still on the loose? Everyone has secrets, right? What really matters is how far you would go to protect them. So I'm going to talk about this book, and then at the end, I'm going to do some spoilers, and I'll tell you before I do that, so you can turn off the video if you want to, because there's a couple things I really want to say about this uh, book. I will say this, first of all, and uh, nothing I say until that point will spoil the book for you. Um, I was not surprised by this book at all. Like, I mean, I saw it coming a mile ahead. Um, I, a third of the way through the book, I had it solved. Um, I mean, it's not the greatest mystery in the world. What's interesting about this that I didn't expect is that, like, I really was kind of taken with the story of the characters. And, like, yeah, it's a great kind of mystery Kind of like, I mean, I don't know if anybody else figured it out right away, I, but I did because it just, there's just, you can kind of see the direction of where it's going to go. You can even kind of figure out some of the secrets that are going to happen throughout the, the book. But at the same time, like, I don't know that it matters. And what's funny is I finished the book and I found myself the next day like, wishing there was a sequel. Like, I kind of didn't really want their story to be done. Like, it was like watching a TV show. Like, I, and what happens is when you read the book, it jumps from character to character to character. So it goes over the course of about, um, September, October, a month and a half, six weeks, something like that, I think. And it goes, like, it jumps from day to day to day. So it'll be, like, a Monday, and then, like, three of them will share their story, and then Wednesday, and then two of them will, do you know what I mean? It's, like, kind of like diary entries. Um, and it's very interesting, and a lot of things happen and there's a lot of interaction between them and to some degree it's kind of told like a true crime story too which is interesting because on peter's book club we are doing a year of true crime and we are currently reading the stranger beside me uh by ann rule about uh ted bundy so you know it was interesting because i've been reading all these books that are kind of like that i just started last night on audible um oh shoot i should pull it up so i can tell you guys what it's called that new hank green book it is so good you guys Okay, I was like, is this going to be just like John Green? It's very much like John Green, I will tell you that. Right out of the gate, it's kind of very much like John Green. But it is so good. An absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. It is, it's about a viral video on YouTube and this girl. It is so good, you guys. It is like, 
it is the book that I really wanted to read right now. So um, you should go check it out. But anyway, um, I didn't want to like stop like hearing their story. I was kind of like so into their story. I ended up giving it um, five stars because I thought the storytelling was done so well. Um, I was really kind of like impressed with it. In fact, I wish there was a way that Karen McManus, she just had a book that came out on the 8th, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but I wish that there was a way that Karen McManus could make this a sequel and follow up to it. Um, like if there were more secret secrets that came out. And I have kind of an idea for how that would happen, but I'll talk about that at the end. Um, anyway, I just, you know, what was really interesting was the characters changed a lot over the course of the uh, story. All of them changed. I mean, all of them critically changed throughout the course of the story. It wasn't just some, you know, like, I don't know, popular young adult book that, like, is on the New York Times bestseller list. Like, the characters were really, like, like thoroughly developed. I was super impressed with it. The storyline was good. The parents were very involved in the whole thing. There wasn't a lot to me that, like, I questioned and thought, like, this wouldn't really happen in the real world. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was all, I thought, kind of fact-checked with, like, I, I, it almost felt to me like there were a lot of beta readers that were that age group that were like, yeah, this is consistent with what... It just seemed very consistent to me with reality. So I like that. Okay, so let's talk about her next book because she has a new book that just came out. I just looked and it came out January 8th. Had I known that, I probably would have bought that on Audible and listened to that. Um, but the book is called... Two of Us something. Two Can Keep a Secret. So the first book was called One of Us is Lying. The second one is called Two Can Keep a Secret. And I was like, this is kind of reminding me a little bit of Pretty Little Liars, honestly. But I was like, um, which I didn't only watch one season of. And then my husband watched the whole series. And he said he didn't like how it ended. But anyway, um, Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen McManus. Echo Ridge is a small town America. Ellery's never been there, but she's heard all about it. Here, I'll put the little thing up there. Her aunt went missing there at age 17, and only five years ago, homecoming queen put the town on the map when she was killed. Now Ellery has to move there to live with a grandmother she barely knows. The town is picture perfect, but it's hiding secrets. And before school even begins for Ellery, someone's declared open season on homecoming, promising to make it as dangerous as it was five years ago. Then almost as if to prove it, another girl goes missing. Ellery knows all about secrets. Her mother has them. Her grandmother does too. And the longer she's in Echo Ridge, the clearer it becomes that everyone there is hiding something. The thing is, secrets are dangerous and most people aren't good at keeping them, which is why in Echo Ridge, it's safest to keep your secrets to yourself. Let's see what the rating is. Oh my God, 4.16 at this point, but it only has 844 ratings. It's kind of crazy, right? Let's see what somebody said. I hated one of us is lying, but I want to give the author another chance. Oh, okay. Um, somebody here said, okay. Mm, I didn't really enjoy this one as much as one of us is lying. There's all kinds of different ratings on it. So I will probably listen to that next. Um, before my last two reads of the month, which is going to be um, The Stranger Beside Me for the book club and Harry Potter and The Order of the Phoenix because I'm reading that book. And then I'm reading, I have three more Harry Potter books and then I'm done with the, is it three more? Yeah, and then I'm done with the series. So anyway, um, those are the Karen McManus books. I gave One of Us is Lying five stars. I probably would give it about a 92%. Um, but then I want to have a discussion about something, okay? So if this is a spoiler part of it, if you don't want it to ruin it for you, bye, it was great seeing you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Turn off the video. Okay, so let, let's have a conversation about this. Um, it really, when I figured out where this book was going, I was like, ooh, like, I don't know if I think this is problematic or not, okay? So if you've read the book, if you haven't read the book and you're going to read the book, you need to turn it off now. Like, I'm telling you right now, turn it off, okay? Um... When I figured out that Simon had killed himself, it very much reminded me of 13 Reasons Why. Like, all of a sudden, the book seemed almost, like, in certain ways, identical to 13 Reasons Why. And 13 Reasons Why, when it first came out and I read it, I didn't really have an issue with it. When it came out on the TV show with Netflix, and I did watch the show on Netflix, um, you know... And all these people started talking about, about how problematic the show was and how problematic the book was and things like that. And, you know, Jay Asher. But, you know, like, I kind of questioned that in reading this book. I was like, is it done differently? Is the message different? Do we have a problem with this? Like, I really don't know. And so I'm going to leave it up to you guys, if you've read it, to put in the comment section below whether you thought it was done appropriately or inappropriately. You know, I thought that Janelle's character um, was very, was that her name? Janelle, yeah. Was very important to the play out of Simon at the end of this. Um, you know, and I think that... But I, I just don't, I don't know. Like, you know, and the other thing is, I felt kind of like, 
Cooper's coming out was very trite. Like, I saw it, like, I saw that as being the secret that was kept the longest. When it was honestly, like, the first secret when they were going through there, like, the people that didn't know, like, you know, what, uh, like, what the secrets were that hadn't come out yet. Like, I knew that was what Cooper's secret was, okay? And I just felt like it was very stereotypical that, like, the baseball jock who's all good looking and wants to go to college, of course, is, like, the gay guy that can't come out. Do you know what I mean? He has a dad that's overbearing. I don't know. I felt like it was so stereotypical. I thought it could have been done in kind of a different way. Um, so that was really, really interesting to me. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just thought it could have been different to me. I loved the character of Nate. I thought he was fantastic in the book. I loved all the characters. I was really taken with them. I loved Bronwyn. I thought she was fantastic as a character. I thought she was so well developed. And I loved her relationship between her and Nate, and I have to tell you that when I got to the end of the book and he was being kind of nasty to her and just said, I don't want to see you anymore, I was so done. I thought, if this book ends this way with her being with this Evan guy and this is just, hey, this is reality, like, I did not devote all this time to not have uh, Bronwyn and Nate together at the end of the book. So I was very, very happy when it ended the way that it did. And and I loved that, like, Maeve kind of, like, coerced that together and Addie and, like, you know, made that all happen at the end. So I don't know. Like, I, I would kind of like to see a sequel. And I think that would be interesting if, if there was a sequel with them and then it was like another kind of like site came out and it wasn't Jake and it wasn't Janelle and it wasn't Simon and it was like where are all these secrets coming from? It could go on. It could be another sequel and they could be involved as well to kind of like mentor the people that had gone through it before. So I think it could be done well. But I don't know. What do we think about the whole suicide aspect to it? I think it's such a touchy subject. I think like, you know, I, I personally felt like it was handled well in the book, but I also think it could have been handled differently. And so, um, I don't know. I, do we think there should have been trigger warnings in the book? You know, um, I think that's something to ask as well. Cause I didn't, I, I think for somebody that's younger, that's reading this, you know, it's like fifth on the young adult New York times bestseller list. So it's a lot of younger people that are reading this, you know, are we teaching the message that this is another way to get revenge on people that don't like you? I don't know. Like, you know, like I, I really, I don't know where I stand with that. So I guess I would really like to see the conversation in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and yeah, I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.